So my name's Cameron and I'm here with Ron Routledge, who is one of the many friends of legendary footballer Bobby Charlton. But uh, they're all different now. I mean, uh, in my day when we used to play, there was mud. And in the winter, there was never any games called off for ice or snow or anything like that. When and where did you and Bobby first meet? We were both selected for the Northumberland County side, which was 15 and under. And that's basically when we actually become friends, around about the 13 year olds was more or less when we really started to have a friendship. I've got three of those senior cup winners. At 15 year old, we both went, I went to Ma uh, Burnley and Bobby went to Manchester, so therefore we were with our professional clubs. So we didn't play locally, local football then, but we did happen to play against each other. Bad lights here, yeah. When I was playing with Sunderland, Intermediates, and Bobby was playing for Manchester United on Intermediates, that's the under 18s, in the Youth Cup. I joined Ashton in 1962 from Bradford, um, and we were pretty successful. We had a good, Running the cup, we, we won the senior cup, I think it was three year running. That was the year I signed for Ashton, 1962. So your last club before you retired from playing was Ashington CFC. So what did you do when you retired? Did you go into like coaching or anything else to do with football? I actually retired through injury, um, but I carried on at Ashington as, as a trainer to Ken Pryor. Ken Pryor was manager then. Uh, and the trainer's job then, you were trainer, you were coach, uh, you were masseur. You did every, jo every job that had to be done at the football club. So I carried on there for two or three years. And then I packed, I packed football in altogether. But later, I found another interest back in Ashington Football Club. So what was it like being chairman at Ashington? Hard, thankless, Well, it was a job that had to be done. Somebody had to step into the breach. Do you think that today's generation of footballers from Ashington can make it into professional football? Why not? I mean, if they've got the enthusiasm, if they've got the ability, there's nothing to stop them. Ashton CFC Juniors was actually formed in the year 2000, so it was two existing junior clubs come together, um, and it's been Ashton Juniors since then, so going on 18 years now. I'm here with Gary Bell, the manager of Ashton CFC Under 17s and board member of the main club. We also have Matthew Potts, the chairman of all the CFC youth teams. Uh, we've currently got 10 teams playing from uh, under 8s, uh, sorry, under 7s, uh, right the way through to under 17s. Uh, and we've also got an under 5s and 6 development squad who train here once a week as well. And the hope is that they come through and become part of a, a team uh, in the coming years. It's grown over the years. Um, I think, you know, you, you start with a team who are just having there for a little bit of fun. Uh, but the older the kids get, the, the more serious they take it and uh, we're currently sitting in what's called the Premier League of the Pinpoint, which is the top division. Um, they're, they're playing at a very good standard and uh, hopefully are looking to go into adult football uh, very soon. Uh, and a couple of them have already signed for the first team and are looking now hopefully to take that forward. They're going well. We're playing together regularly as we both play for different academies as well as playing in Ashton. And we train together quite regularly here and play games regularly. What positions do you mainly play? I play centre back or full back. Goalkeeper. Are there any Ashington female teams that exist or, cu or are currently being discussed? Um, at present, we're sort of beginning our five year development plan for the club. Um, hopefully, next season, we're going to see the start of some development sessions for girls. And then going forward from there, we're hopefully going to hopefully have um, one team per season coming through for girls. So that's where we see that going forward. I used to be there at one time get across, but uh, it's very difficult now. Actual fact, that's 
To my right hand side is where I stopped the penalty from Bobby Charlton at, at, at Old Trafford. <laughs> my time at the Ashton Football Club was when I asked Bobby Charlton if he could possibly arrange for a team from Manchester to come up in a pre-season friendly match, which Bobby obliged. And at that game, during that game, the coach of the Manchester United State came across and he gave me that signed autograph sheet. The current chairman now has just been re-elected is uh, Brian Shotton. It's been a long process. I originally got involved in the club in the 90s. I was a bit of a ball boy. I would help around the ground, um, watch the games. Then I became programme editor, joined the committee, uh, started editing the website. Then I got involved in the finance side of the club and it, it's, it's just a bit of everything really. I've, I've worked in the bar, I've sold pints, I've sold pies. I've done everything really. <laughs> Uh, apart from play, <laughs> which, I, which I'm not very good at anyway, so that's why I didn't play. What is your take of the Ashton CFC stadium move to the current ground, Woodhorn Lane? Um, it was a very difficult move. It was a wrench to leave Portland Park because it's like anything else. If you live in a house for a long time or or you have a, a special connection to somewhere, then it becomes a you know a part of your life. Um, but I found that uh, moving here was it had to be. Made, we had to make progress, and, and as far as I'm concerned, it was progress. Um, yeah, so it, it was a difficult choice, to, the decision at the time to have to come here, um, but we unfortunately it wasn't in our hands, and we we made the best of what we could. So, what are your main plans to evolve this club from this transitional position it's in? It, it's to tie everything in with the community as much as we can, really. I mean, Ashton's a very tight town I would say it, you know but at the same time it needs people need a lot of support here and as a club we want to support as many people as we can um, we like doing things for charity we've just involved the the Wandsbeck Valley Food Bank so you know we're, we're trying to bring everyone into this club as, as, a, as a hub really and that's my biggest aim is to to make the club a community asset that, that that's so important here that you know we can really help a lot of people in the club, um, we are a community club just like the first team. Um, we are trying to incorporate stuff like football sessions for disabled footballers. Um, we thoroughly believe everyone should be given an opportunity to play football and it's something that not many teams offer around here so we want to kind of set the standard for that in the future. But, uh, yeah, that's our, that's our vision really. I'd like to think the club is, is, is a sustainable model that, that is uh, you know, we have kids coming through. I want to see Ashton lads playing. Yet. I'm not under the illusion that we're going to have 11 Ashton lads playing on that field, but I'd like to think that we're going to encourage a lot more local players to come through who represent the town um, and, and to play at the highest level club we possibly can. did have a lot of historical stuff, but not this club here, but I know it has over the years, but obviously it's gone. It's and that Melbourne there, is that Jackie Melbourne? Uh, it will be, yes, it will be. With my passion and drive and commitment to the club and love for the club, that yeah, we, you will see a reflection of that in and around the place, whether it's in the clubhouse, on the field, or you know, just as an organisation. That that's the way I want to be. When you leave this team, do you possibly see yourselves as professional players one day? We've had a lot of scouts at our games, and we've had a lot of meetings with potentially going over to America in the future but we don't know at the minute, we're just focusing on getting into the first team. Um, the, the season actually starts um, early September when the schools go back uh, and it runs through till probably about May time. I also ran, ran a Saturday team with them last year and uh, we were fortunate to win the league and the cup uh, with that team and we also won the divisional cup with the Sunday team as well so we had a successful season last season and we're hoping for a similar season this. I think at this level the fan base has decreased massively. I was talking to a previous chairman and footballer Ron Routledge earlier about it and 
you know, he would he would play in front of six, seven, eight thousand fans uh, in non-league football. Uh, that was when the mines were at the, the height and people worked shifts, so people would leave work, go straight to the football. I know my granddad was one of them. He he went to watch Ashton, um, and and that that's changed because now we don't have those shifts, we don't have that industry, we don't have that constant. The town was a constant machine that worked day and night basically. Um, we don't have that now, so. You know, it's, it has changed, but we, we tr attract a lot of younger people now. And, you know, we've still got, I know people that come here that are in their 90s. I know people that come here that are in their teens. You know, it's, it's a broad age range, really. But like in, like any community organisation, it all gets brought together for one reason. And I've made so many good friends here over the years. So, you know, even though we only get 200 to 250, it's still a special group of people because they're all here for the same reason, really. Yeah. <laughs>